Hello, and welcome to another edition of From the Field with Carlton Farms. I'm Chad Carlton, and this is our farm projects episode. Um, we're going to be following a couple of farm projects uh, that we built here on the farm and uh, talking about those and just how we go about troubleshooting and problem solving and things like that. I was, I was raised on dairy farm, as most of you know, and on the dairy my whole childhood what we did is tinkered and built things. We had a, uh, lived in an area of the country where not many people were in the dairy business, so there wasn't all the stuff necessarily that you needed all the time. So uh, we would have to build and tinker and make things work for the, uh, you know, for the purpose that we needed. And uh, those, those skills and the desire to do that thing is kind of entrenched and inbred, and it's one of the most fun things that I do on the farm is identifying a problem, figuring out a way that we can um, solve it or make it, the process more efficient or whatever it might be, and then uh, you know fabricating some some way to do that. So uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, and there's no shortage of, <laughs> of places to to exercise your creativity in that manner. So. Um, we're going to follow these two projects today, but first let me explain what the problems were that we were trying to address. So um, we've got two uh, that we're going to look at today, a mobile turkey roost that we constructed, and then a uh, vehicle that we modified to take care of our chickens and turkeys and uh, ducks and those kind of things. So. To start with, there's a mobile turkey roof, so we needed a place when we raise turkeys out on pasture, once they get, um, you know, probably 10 to 12 weeks old, they're big and hardy enough to live outside. They don't necessarily need a shelter. They're big enough that, um, you know, not many predators are gonna bother them as long as you have them kind of enclosed and protected a little bit with some electric netting. And um, so, if, so if you can protect them in that manner, then they're hardy enough to live outside. The only thing is they want to get up off the ground at night, so they want to roost. And uh, you've seen our, our previous turkey videos where we had, um, you know, the, there was one kind of V-shaped uh, roost that we built a few years ago, and but we've expanded our turkey production, so we needed something that would hold more birds and get them up off the ground and just allow them a place to sleep. And if they get up on those roosts and sleep there, then it also uh, you know, keeps rain. If it rains at night and whatnot, they'll, um, they'll be protected from that. So uh, they're heavy enough, they're well feathered enough to stay warm. You just want them, they naturally want a place to get up off the ground. They'll even fly up on top of your, whatever it is you build, they'll roost up there if it's at all possible. They just want to get up off the ground is their natural tendency. So we needed a, a turkey roost to accommodate, you know, we got about 300, 350 turkeys or so over there right now. And we needed a roost to accommodate those. So the turkey roost, uh, we got that project completed. Um, we got it out in the field, it's in use right now. Um, so we'll go over that one. Another one is our vehicle that we use to uh, take care of the chickens, turkeys, ducks, all that kind of thing. Um, that one uh, we'll talk about as well. And that was basically the problem, the kind of the, to define the problem there. The chi a lot of those animals are on a different farm. So from where I'm standing here is kind of our base operation. And then down the road, we've got uh, about 70 acres of pasture where we raise a lot of those things and we were doing a lot of transport back and forth, primarily with a tractor because um, if, if you've ever seen our chicken houses, we pull those forward each day so that the chickens have a fresh uh, patch of grass to, to pick around on and eat. Uh, so we pull those forward every day. Well, we needed a pretty big uh, machine to pull those forward. Uh, you know, a small tractor works fine, but we're driving the tractor over there uh, a couple times a day. We're taking water over there with the tractor, um, then taking feed in the truck. It was just a lot of trips and we needed to make that more efficient. 
So we had a van that we had bought. Matter of fact, the box that you see behind me with these doors in the side um, was on a van that we bought. We bought it because we wanted the box because this is a new uh, home delivery vehicle that we're uh, working on. It's not in service yet, but uh, we wanted that box. We bought the van, took the box off, put it on this new truck, and then we had this van sitting around. Didn't really have a need for it, and uh, but it didn't really have much value, so there wasn't much point in trying to sell it. Had a lot of miles on it, but for running around the farm here, we thought it'd be perfect. So we modified it, put a bed on it, put a water tank, uh, fixed a winch on the back so that we can uh, pull up with the vehicle in front of the chicken tractor or chicken uh, pen, the pasture house, and hook the winch to the uh, house, pull the house forward, take the feed off the truck, feed the chickens, but then we also wanted to have a water tank on the truck so that we could um, go ahead and water them as well. So you get all of those operations into one efficient trip and it's, it's done with a, a vehicle that's more suitable to drive up and down the road rather than a tractor, which was um, a little more problematic when we tried to uh, just wear and tire, tires out and there's no need in being on the, on the road that much with the tractor. So, so that's what we're going to look at today. I hope you enjoy it. This is a, a farm projects episode, so you can just kind of get an idea of the tinkering that we do and the uniqueness of what we do and how we go about um, you know, tackling some of those challenges. Now, before we cut over to those and I show you those projects, uh, where I'm standing right now makes me very happy. If you can see, we're on a concrete pad and my whole life I've worked on all these projects just on gravel and dirt, <laughs> which is terrible, and uh, used a cardboard typically we'd lay out cardboard and crawl under stuff and build it and that kind of thing um, just about two weeks ago we were able to pour this concrete pad this is eventually going to become a shop um, we're not going to be able to complete it right now as far as building the uh, walls and everything for it but uh, eventually it will have walls but at least to have a flat concrete uh, pad to work on is a great improvement so this is where we'll be tackling all of our farm projects in the future. But, uh, so now let's go, let's take it to the field and see some of the uh, couple of projects that we've been working on lately. We built the winch into the back of the truck, which is kind of opposite of the way most winches would normally be on the front. So this is a very uh, specific purpose. So just to go over the truck again, we built the big winch in the back, got a remote control, a little area to uh, carry the feed. This is all on a, on a van body that we bought, repurposed the van. Uh, so you notice we've got a, no back window, but we have a plywood back wall. So that's our, kind of our ghetto fix. Um, got a 275 gallon water tank. Turn it off at the tank, and then we can also. This is what sticks down in the the chicken's water tank. We just turn that on, let it gravity flow in there, so there's no mechanics or working parts to it, and it does well. That's our chicken tender wagon. And first thing we'll do is come up right beside the the house right there, and run the water line inside. He feeds and waters from this angle, and then we'll pull around and. Uh, attach the winch to it and pull. So we got two down here. In this lower part, they'll as we pull them up a little bit each day, they'll eventually make their way over to that part of the pasture. And then there's got a bunch of uh, nosy neighbors here following me around. But you can see a couple more uh, houses up on the top part of the pasture that'll make their way over the next several weeks down to the, to the far end. Now it's time to move the houses. He hooks the winch up to the house and the winch is in neutral. So then he pulls up 
So the winch is hooked to a little chain on the front of the house. We got two anchor points on the front of the house that are designed to distribute the weight throughout so that we're pulling evenly on the house. So we hook a little chain to that, hook the winch to the chain. Uh, our winch has a little remote control so that we can control it from, uh, you know, as we're kind of out observing the chickens and that kind of thing. We have uh, the door on the back side of the house. So what he'll do now is walk around, get in the house so that we can push those chickens forward. And the remote control winch allows him to push, allows it, this to actually be a one man job. It used to be when the chicks were little, uh, it would be a two person job. But now you can hear the winch running probably in the background. And I don't know if you can see the house moving, but it's moving very slowly. So he's moving the chickens up. Go over here and take a little bit of a closer look. See the house moving. All we're going to do is pull that one link, one link to the house. Moving along, they're finding them some new grass. Typically, as soon as they find the new grass, they'll run up towards the front. They do like that. So they'll come up and, and eat. And it's not too hard to move them forward. Honestly, as you get them used to the moving process, once they get a little older than these are, these have only been out on pasture for a week, week and a half or so. So once they get a little older, there's really not much need to push them, but we do still go back there just to make sure one doesn't, uh, you know, get crushed by the house. You want to always take care, of, you know, watch out for that. And we keep, so we go back and make sure they walk up. But once they get older, uh, they walk up pretty readily looking for the fresh grass. So now that house has been moved up. Uh, they fertilized the pasture behind it. Uh, he's got the feeders already full in there. He'll set those down. We need to have those hanging on the chain. We haven't done that yet. Pull the little slack in the winch. Take it loose. Move on to the next one. So for our second project that we're going to look at today is the turkey shelter. And as I told you, uh, they, those birds need to get up off the ground. They need some protection from the sun and rain. And what we started with here was a regular four-wheeled farm wagon. Uh, as you can see there, it was just a base wagon. It had no bed on it or anything. We added the uh, horizontal runners down, uh, one on each side, and then built a roof structure up from that. As you can see, we reinforced it with some rebar. Uh, welded it in good. I had a lot of good help there. You see all three of my kids hanging on it. Um, got it reinforced good with the rebar. And, you know, eventually we're going to put some slats in it that you can see there. We had some old canvas that we had on, on an old chicken house that we cut to shape. Got it ready to fit on the top. Uh, draped it over. And then basically just had to roll up some wood in the ends. Tighten it up good and tight. And uh, clamp it down so that we could then put the screws through it and hold the roof on there tight. It's basically just to shed water. It's a thick canvas. It sheds water and provides a good shade for the turkeys when they're out on pasture. All the slats that you see across it are the roosting bars. So they'll sit up on those primarily at night and uh, get up off the ground and sleep there. So that's our roost. That's the completed project right there. It's out in the field now and the turkeys are loving it. I'm Chad Carlton, and I'd like to thank you for watching another episode of From the Field with Carlton Farms. We value your time, and we appreciate it so much. If you would press like, hit subscribe, all that kind of good stuff, we'll be glad to keep making you videos. If you'd like one of these delicious turkeys to adorn your Thanksgiving table, or would like to order any of our other uh, farm fresh products, go to carltonfarm.com. We'll be happy to get that stuff to you. Have a good day.